So now let's make some trim for these windows. We set aside these templates when we cut uh, out the gables so we can use them to draw uh, around to make the trim for these windows. And then we can either use the, I kept the little half inch guys over here, but they're a, a specific size that we can just draw. So it depends on how you want to do it. So let's just do one of these gables. So I'm taking the gable and I'm going to trace around it carefully with a colored marker. I'm using my gathered twigs. And I just want to go slowly and carefully right on the edge. of this cutout window. Okay. And now I'd like the window to, or the trim to be about an eighth of an inch away uh, in size. So I'm going to put my ruler down and first I'm going to do it in, no I can do it in pen, sorry. So I'm going to put it down and it's okay if these lines extend further because when we cut those little points will come off because it's hard to judge exactly how far to draw them if you just don't draw them more than you need. So, sorry there's glare on this ruler. Not much I can do about that. And now uh, we can cut this out. So first I like to cut on the inside section. I'm just holding my ruler right up against that line I drew. I don't want to cut that line away. Just on the inside of that line I'm taking my craft knife. can either continue with a craft knife on the outside or I find it just as easy if not easier to use my scissors to get this guy out of the way. Oops, he's not quite cut right down here. Make sure you take time to get the corners with your craft knife and not just yank them out of there so that it comes out nice and clean. Alright, now let's now let's cut this. And I think I'll do just a smidge of inking while it's still supported by this larger piece of paper. There we go. Now we're ready to cut. And I'm going to leave that brown line that I drew. Just cut to leave it there. Let's just do a little inking around the edges. Or as much inking as you'd like. And now we'll do a little test fit over here. And I think that's going to work out just fine.
if you think that you're seeing just a smidge of the, the chipboard in here, you could come in with your, um, your marker. Just hit that, that edge a little bit. That way if there's just a smidge that's showing, it won't, it won't show. That was the only place that it was just a hair, just a hair. And now I'll just add a little bit of, uh, I have a fine line um, white glue that I will add and put that trim around the window. And so then I'll continue that for the other windows. I'm even going to do these windows that we don't have the acrylic behind yet. So I'll be back when that's accomplished. So I'm back just to put the last couple pieces of trim on. You can see I've got some of them already installed. And to do this, I just take my thin glue applicator and run a, a tiny bead of glue in the center of each one of those trims. And then try to keep it straight and the same thing for this big window. I did take my uh, gathered twigs marker just around the edges a little bit in case any of uh, the, the, ch the trim isn't cut exactly precisely and I did also take the gathered twig marker around the inside and the outside edges of each one of these pieces of trim. Okay, so now all of the trim is on and we can assemble our building. Now we'll put a strip for the roof just like we have for every other building. But we'll need to do something a little bit different for the side joint here. The first thing we want to do is take off this score tape backing. And then we would be putting our cardstock joining strip right along here. Now these strips, as you recall, are three uh, quarters of an inch wide scored in half, so that's uh, three eighths inch, and there's only the maximum that there is here is a quarter of an inch. So we need to trim this back a little bit so that it doesn't interfere with our window. And I'm just going to take my Sharpie and kind of mark where I need to notch that out. The Sharpie doesn't stick too well to this, but just kind of around, enough so that it will not interfere with that. And then I'll take my scissors and cut that notch out. And so when we go to apply this on here, we've got a notch for around that building. Let's give that a good burnish. And now we covered up a little bit of that eighth inch score tape when we did that. So let's just go ahead and put another little 
dab on there. And now we can put our last last window on. I'm going to trim this back just a little bit more because that cardstock joining strip has some width to it as well. See how that's going to work. Yeah, that'll work. Remember to keep it above that line we drew. And we'll give that a burnish. So now we're ready to make our building 3D. We've done all of the special construction for the windows. So this is just uh, like we did every other window except, you know, before I do that I'm just going to take my marker and hit the inside corner of this joining strip. Alright, now, now let's do it. Put that in there and burnish this other side. And then Join the roof up. This side the doors are going to go on. So there are all of our stained glass windows in there and we need to um, put wet glue to join the roof on and so I will do that and once it's dried I will come back. So my glue is set up and I'm ready to attach my roof, decorate and attach my roof I should say, which is the same as any of the other roofs. So I've already put my shingles on and I've got my ridge cap uh, made and so I'll just add some wet glue here. Center this. Use my mat to make sure everything is staying nice and square and checking my overhang. Just kind of hold that in place for a minute. Okay, and now this ridge cap I've used a more intricate punch on, so I'm just going to use this fine line gluer to make sure I can get maximum glue on here. Okay. 
So now we'll turn our attention to making the steeple for the building. Set the church aside and let's get out our sheet from the cutting and layout guide and our little piece of chipboard that as you recall is two and a half by three and the stiffness is on the two and a half inch direction. So I have put some basic instructions on uh, the cutting and layout guide but I'll talk you through the first ones here. So uh, we need to make some scores. There's a steeple. Here's the prototype. The steeple basically has a three-quarter inch kind of square base to it and then it comes up to a point. So in order to accomplish that, first we need to make some three-quarter inch scores for the sides. It's, it's basically side walls, just like we did uh, buildings. So we have the long, I have the three inch uh, direction up here at the top, and I'm scoring on the three quarter inch lines. And then once I have those three quarter inch lines scored that way, oh, before I take it off there, I'm going to utilize my scoring board to make some little tick marks. So we made these scores at three quarters of an inch, and right here at the top, we want to, at the three eighths inch, so centered in between our two score lines. So at the three eighths, at the one and one eighth, at the one and seven eighths and the two and five eighths or in between each one of these scores we just want to make a little mark. Those are going to be our guide um, marks for making the steeple. Okay so now let's turn it so that the shorter inch, a shorter side is at the top. Our tick marks are at the right and we'll score all the way down at three quarters of an inch this way. So what we're going to do is cut the points of the steeple and they're going to go from these tick marks that we made to the intersections of the scores. So you can draw these lines and then cut them or I have my big shears which I can line up to cut so I'm just going to go for it. But if you're more comfortable by all means make a line and then cut on the line. Just stop when you get to that marked intersection uh, down at the three quarter inch score. So you're cutting out little wedges here. And then I just turn around to get this last one starting down there at the score and lining up my scissors with the top. So I end up with something that looks like this. little miniature crown. So now let's do some folding. And turn this into our steeple. We'll first fold on the, the vertical fold lines and then give these points just a little bend in. They're, they're only going to come in slightly so you don't have to get really crazy about it. 
Now we're going to put the points together with glue and sometimes you know, when you add glue, if the glue comes over the edges a little bit, if you want to ink, the ink doesn't look as nice um, because it doesn't stick to the glue like it does to the bare chipboard. So I've decided that I'll ink first before I put it together. So now I'm going to just take a little piece of my score tape joining strip and turn this into a three-dimensional object. Just like we've done everything else. Get in there and burnish that. And then what we want to do is put some ink on the, I'm sorry, not ink, glue on the inside and just kind of hold this together until it forms the, the nice point. So you may put some ink on the edges like, you know, like we've done for the roofs. You could squirt some, you know, pinch it together and squirt some ink up inside of there. You know, you, it's not like you need a ton of ink, but you want to make sure you get get all the, you know, as close down here to the intersection as you can. See right there, I went over with the glue a little bit. It's a little tricky to keep the glue off the front side because it's kind of small. I'm sure you'll do a better job than I do. Didn't do this side yet. Oops, my glue went a little crazy. Now I certainly have enough glue there. That's why I always keep a wet wipe handy. And now we'll just bring these points together. Sorry. Bring these points together. Sometimes the glue has to, you know, get a little bit, a little bit tacky in order for things to stick. So you might let it wait a second for that to happen. Like I said, you'll do a much better job at controlling your glue than I did. Try to keep the base square down here. And then you could just kind of rest it on your rest it on your table. And that helps you line it up with a sorry my fingers are in the way. I'm holding the point together and I've got the base. I'm using the square lines on my mat to make sure that I'm keeping it square. So now my steeple is thoroughly dry and I've zoomed in a little bit so you can um, hopefully see this process a little more clearly. I'm going to finish inking down here on the base. And now we need to cut a little notch so that the steeple can fit onto the pitch of our roof. So what we want to do is measure and on two sides 
opposite sides we're going to make a little tick mark that is let me do this in ink it's at the score line and it's halfway in between so this is three quarters of an inch wide you measure in three eighths or use your centering ruler to get there do it on one side and flip and do it on the opposite side right on that score line and it can be ink because it will be covered up with paper and then you can either draw connecting lines from that point to the corners or you can just go for it with your scissors and take your scissors right from that corner to the intersection on both sides and remove that little wedge it needs to go right from that corner so if you need to come back and trim it up a little do that right from the corner to that marked intersection remove those little wedges now try it on for size mine looks like I need to come it looks pretty good actually and it I think the only reason it doesn't fit so well on this side right here is I need to come right to that corner and I was off just a little bit now let's see if those little slivers do the trick now I think you can see and it fits on there just right. That angle is just perfect for this this um, this size of roof. So, uh, inking a little where we cut. Uh, I guess that mark this in pencil because when you do cut up to it, it it could show a little bit. I've forgot about that. I'm going to just put some heavier inking in there and it won't show. There we go. So now we need to uh, cover with paper. Paper of your choice, of course. I'm going to cover it with the same uh, cardstock, I mean decorative paper that I use for the body of the church, but you can use something different. I'm going to do each side in one piece, not have a break where that where the um, uh, vertical part meets the the pointy part. But you you know that's personal preference. Um, this is three quarters of an inch wide, so I've uh, cut some five eighths of an inch strips um, to have my reveal, and I'll do my thing like I have done before to to cut these. I'm going to start with the easier sides, the sides without the the point, I mean without the wedge cut out. And trying to get it lined up with the center. You have to like tilt it a little bit. Sorry I got off camera here. So I put on the uh, repositionable tape. I've centered it and now I've gone to, uh, I'll make sure that it's centered here. I'm going to just put some heavier inking in there and it won't show. There we go. So now we need to uh, cover with paper. Paper of your choice, of course. I'm going to cover it with the same uh, 
cardstock, I mean decorative paper that I use for the body of the church, but you can use something different. I'm going to do each side in one piece, not have a break where that where the um, uh, vertical part meets the, the pointy part, but you, you know, that's personal preference. Um, this is three quarters of an inch wide, so I've uh, cut some five eighths of an inch strips. Um, to have my reveal, and I'll do my Out of the way here. So then look at the steeple and say which side is there a better looking side on the ones with the wedge? I think for me it's this one, and that is the side we'll put towards the front of the church. Now what we'll do is just put some glue up inside of there. I like to hold it back. I think I've got it back about a, a quarter of an inch or so. And so we'll put the glue in. Just put some 
glue kind of try not to you don't want too much any seepage at this point so try to keep it inside you need to be on the edges a little bit but very carefully and then come in like I said I come in about a quarter of an inch now you want to make sure you look at it both from from all directions to make sure it's straight you know it looks straight this way when I turn it this way it's definitely leaning a little bit the other direction so look at it from every direction use your you can use your craft mat you know if it's if it's centered that and you put the put the building on the two one inch marks the point of that steeple should come right up on the one inch sometimes there's nothing like eyeballing it once you think you've got it where you want it let it dry So I'll add the doors here, and then the little tea light goes in into the sits in the base, and then the church will be done. So here is the little church. I've added some doors on the front. The trim measures about one and three eighths inch wide by one and a half inches tall. Just some little uh, craft um, doors on the on there and I haven't decided whether it I'll use the little 24 on it or not I'm not quite sure what what looks the best and even if it needs it so we'll wait and see what's in the finished product project so there's the, the little church and with the tea light inside, the stained glass windows will light up. Actually, any of the, the buildings that are bigger than uh, one and three quarter inches could have windows cut in them and be lit up with two tea lights. Um, this is a pretty ambitious project as it is with 24 buildings, so I thought just making the final building into a, the church and having that one light up would be... Um, enough. So you can make 24 into a church or just leave it any other building as you desire.